So good day everyone. Today we are going to discuss about sets. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about uh, methods of proving theorems such as the direct proof, proof by contraposition, proof by contradiction, and proof by cases. So today we are going to discuss about um, an introduction to set theory, basic um, notations and definition of sets, as well as set relations and set operations. Okay, before everything else, let us discuss what a set is. So from the word itself, set means a group of objects. So an example of it may be a set of people in a class. And the people may include um, Alice, Bob, or Chris. And then another example is the classes offered in UPV ComSci. And this includes some of the subjects you're taking now, like ComSci 11 or ComSci 56. And then we also have a set of colors of a rainbow. And this could include this um, Roy G. B. Na colors, right? And then we also have a set of states of matter. Or we have solid, liquid, glass, and plasma. Then cities in Philippines. And this could um, include Iloilo or Bacolod or Manila. And then we could also have a set with non-related elements, like we have a number three, a letter A, a color red, and an animal and a dog. So as you can see, um, this a certain set is um, composed of um, a group of elements. Okay, so we elements that are being um, enclosed in curly braces and are being separated by comma. Okay, so formally a set is a structure representing an, an ordered, so this is very important, an ordered collection of zero or more distinct or different objects. Okay, so we will discuss more about um, an ordered in the word na distinct later and how it is related to set. So later, we are also going to um, discuss more about um, operations between relations among and statements about sets. And this comprise the, the set na theory. Okay, so um, earlier we have mentioned that um, a set is unordered and is composed of distinct na objects. So these are the properties of a set. So when we say unordered, the order of the elements does not does not matter. Okay, so also um, a set must have distinct na elements. So in other words, there must be no duplicate na elements. So here's an example. Let us quickly start with the unordered. So um, unordered again means that the order of the elements does not matter. So um, Sometimes you only write them in order because it is easier for humans to understand it way. So for instance, we have a set containing elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So this will be equivalent to um, a set containing 3, 5, 2, 4, and 1. Okay, so these are um, two sets that have um, the same elements but are listed in different na order. Okay, so still, even if they are unordered, we consider them as um, an equivalent na set. So sets are denoted with curly brackets and also um, separated by comma, as I have already mentioned. So again, um, set has also distinct elements or no duplicate elements. So suppose we have a set of vowels in the alphabet. So it does not make any sense to let list them as A, 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 or E, I, um, O, 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 or U, right? So what we really want is to just have a um, A, E, I, O, and U. Okay? So consider the list of students in the class. Again, it does not make any sense to list somebody twice, right? So note that a list is like a set, but the order does not matter and the duplicate elements are allowed. So we will discuss more about that later. So um, moving on. Now, how do we specify a set? So there are different ways of specifying a set. 
so we can explicitly um, express or explicitly specify a set or implicitly or use an implicit na definition. So when uh, performing an explicit na definition, so we simply list down the elements of a set. Um, however, there are cases wherein this will be um, difficult, especially if the number of elements is large is a lot and the set is large. So um, we can in, use an implicit na, um, definition using builder notation. So moving on, let us um, discuss more about the explicit na definition or simply listing down the elements of a set. So sets are usually represented by a capital letter, A, like A, S, T, U, etc. And the elements of the set are usually represented by an italic na lowercase na letter, like uh, this, simply A or X, Y, and other letters. And um, an easiest way to specify a set is to list all the elements. Suppose we have a set A, and set A contains um, numbers that are, uh, or integers, are positive integers less than or equal to five, uh, less greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to five. So um, that will then contain elements one, two, three, four, and five. So this is an explicit definition such that we are listing down all the elements of a certain set, okay? So here are some other exa examples of specifying in set. So we have, um, suppose we have a set of one, two, three with elements one, two, three. So uh, describing it, so if this is a set that contains one, two, and three, and we list down the members between braces. And we have uh, a set containing one, two, three, and three. And from the definition of or the property of the set that we have mentioned, there are no duplicate elements. So this may be, this, this is equivalent to one, two, and three, since the repetition is irrelevant. And then we have um, one, two, three, which is equivalent to three, two, one. Again, since the sets are unordered. So as you can see, they have the same elements except that they are of the same order. So we can also um, specify if the set is large, we can use an ellipsis, okay? So to shorten the set, so we have one, two, three, until 99. So this is a set of positive integers that is less than 100. Again, we use ellipsis when the general pattern of the elements is obvious. And then um, this, on the other hand, one, two, three, followed by an ellipsis is a way to denote an infinite set. So in this case, this is the set of natural numbers. And this, on the other hand, is an empty set or a, uh, a set containing no elements. Okay, so again, um, it is when uh, using an ex explicit definition or listing down all the elements, it may not be feasible, especially for large or infinite sets. So we can use an ellipsis, for instance, when um, uh, we have a set of B containing um, whole numbers from zero um, and so on. So this can cause na confusion, however, because mm, let's say um, we have a set C and the set C contains or starts with element three, five, seven, and so on. So um, what would be the next number um, after seven? Okay, if we are using an ellipsis. So um, if the set is all the odd integers that is greater than two, then that means that the next element is nine. So we have three, five, seven, nine, 11, right? So what if this, uh, the set C refers to the set of all the prime numbers that is greater than two, then this will be 11. Then the, then the next element fall, um, after seven will be 11, okay? So using this ellipsis, 
um, 10 cause na ambiguity in our definition of the set. Okay? So, we, what we can do instead is to use a set builder notation. So, a set na builder notation is an example of an implicit na definition of a set. So, um, a set builder notation states the properties of the elements of a set. So, suppose we have this example. We have a set D such that uh, X, such that all elements all elements x such that x is prime is a prime number and x is greater than 2. Another example is um, we have a set E that all elements x such that x is an odd number and x is greater than 2. So by using a um, set builder notation and stating the property of the element of a set, there uh, we lessen the ambiguity or remove the ambiguity. So now we know that um, that the um, number that if we refer to set D, we know that the next number followed uh, following seven would be um, 11. But if, um, but if we refer to set E and we know that X is odd, then uh, we know that the number that will follow seven will be 11. I will be um, nine, I mean, right? So the vertical bar here, as you can see, means such that. So set D will then be read as all elements X such that X is prime and X is greater than two, okay? So a set is said to contain the various members or elements that make up the set. So if an element A is a member of an element of a set S, then we can use this symbolic notation. A is an element of, or A is a member of S, okay? So take note of this symbol. There, this refers to member of or an element of. Now, um, we have a certain element here and we are checking whether it is an element of one, two, three, four. Four is, an element of the set containing one, two, three, and four. So, um, and this is true because four is indeed an element of the set. However, if an element is not, take note, not a member of an element or member of or an element of a set S, then we use this notation A is not an element of or not a member of S. So, in this case, we use this notation, seven is not a member of the set containing one, two, three, and four. And this um, certain element dog is also not an element of this set, okay? Now, um, we have already um, used this in our previous examples. We have the um, often used the sets in most of um the exercises and the problems that we have solved in the past. So we have the natural numbers, uh, the set N, which contains um, zero and so on. So it is a set of non-negative na integers, okay? And, and this includes zero. And then we also have the set of um, integers. So it contains zero, negative na um, numbers and the positive na um, integers, okay? And we, saw, we also have the set of positive na integers that is denoted by Z. So it only, um, we remove the negative as well as the zero. So it only contains one, two, and so on. And then we also have the set of rational numbers and we define uh, the set of rational numbers as P over Q, we have a number P over Q, such that P is an element of uh, Z and Q is an element of Z, or in other words, P and Q are um, a set of positive na integers, and the Q should not be, or the denominator Q should not be equal to zero, okay? And the most common that we've had used is the set of real numbers R. Okay, so now if there are um, 
these often used sets. So we can group this all into a one, na big na set, which contains all of the numbers, all of the natural numbers, all of the integers, all of the positive integers, negative integers, rational, irrational numbers, set of real numbers. So we can group this in a one big na set, which we call as the universal na set. So um, U is the universal na set, or the set of all the elements or the universe from which given any set is drawn. So suppose we have... Um, a set S and set S contains negative 2, 0 0.4, and 2. And so we can say that, that the universal set would be the real number. So as you can see, set S contains a negative integer, um, a decimal, as well as a positive integer. Okay, So you would be the real numbers. And we ha have another set T which contains 0, 1, and 2. So the universal set of this set would then be the set of natural numbers. So 0 and up, the integers, the rational numbers, or the real numbers, depending on the context. Okay. And then um, there, here are some of the other examples. Suppose we have the set of the students in this um, COMSA 56 na class. So the universal set would be all the students in the university or perhaps all the people in the world. Or we have the set of vowels in the alphabet. So the universal set would be the letters of all the alphabet. And then we have um, here to differentiate, uh, this is just um, a notation, okay? So differentiate u from u, which is a set na operation, which we will discuss later. The universal set is written in a different font and in bold in italics. So now, how do we understand sets better? So one way that we can um, do this is to use a visualization or um, use Venn diagrams. And I know that you are already familiar with this since um, you have this is already discussed in your senior high school. Okay, so um, this Venn diagrams are ways on how we can represent sets graphically. Okay, so we have here the universal set as an example, and the universal set can contain other sets like a set S. Okay. And we can say then that the set S um, belongs or uh, the elements of set S is also an element of the universal set. Okay, so the box again represents the universal set and the circles will represent the sets. And um, considering the set S, let's say for example, is the set of all vowels in the alphabet. So the set S will then contain A, E, I, O, and Q. So the interval elements that are not written are usually not written in the Venn diagram. Okay, now um, moving on. Um, as I have mentioned, or you have already seen here, that a universal set, of course, is a set, right? Which contains all of the sets. And from that word, So sets can also contain other sets. So for example, we have a universal set Q and this universal set can contain another set and this set can contain another set, okay? So suppose we have a set A, one, two, three, and we can visualize it like this one. We have a set S and it contains the elements one, two, three. So suppose we have another set S and the set S contains three other sets, which contains elements one, two, and three. So we can visualize it like this. We have a set S, and it contains a set um, containing um, an element one, a set with um, element two, and set a set with element three. Okay, and we also have a set T, which similarly contains three 
na elements which are also sets. So we can see it like this. We have the first the element is a set containing two ones. And then we also have the second the element, which is composed of another nested na set, which is um, uh, an empty set, uh, I mean, a set and contains another set with an element of two, and then another set that contains um, an element one and um, a nested set with an element na three. Okay, so we have, let's say, V, and it also contains three in elements. So note that if we have this element one, and it is not equivalent to a set containing element one, and it's also not equivalent to um, a set containing a set with an element one, and it's also not equivalent to the set of a set of a set containing an element one. Okay, so they are all different. So you can visualize it like this. So we have the one and then this, um, this is a set containing one and then we have a double nested na, a set containing one and then we have a triple nested na set containing an element one in, okay? So um, here is another an example of, um, of a nested na set or sets of sets. So we have, let's say, a universal set and then it could contain um, integers from negative one to nine, or it could contain positive integers less than 10, or even integers from two to nine, or um, the odd integers from one to nine, or primes that are less than 10. Okay, so um, what would be then the universal set for this? So the universal set could be natural numbers, uh, no, I mean, the set could be um, set of integers, right? Or the set of um, real numbers. So depending on the context that we want. But um, basing on this um, example alone, so the universal set would be the set of um, integers, okay? So now, if the set can contain other sets, the sets can also contain nothing, okay? So in other words, there are no elements in a set. So we simply have a set that does, does, have, uh, that does have nothing, okay? So an example would then be that we offer a subject and no one enrolls in that subject. So that subject would then have um, no students. So the, it, it is a set that has no um, students. So if a set has zero elements, then it is called as an empty or null set, okay? So we can use this notation or symbol to denote an empty or null set. And um, this is also equivalent to curly braces without any element, okay? So if you get confused by empty set in your problem, you can just simply try to replace this um, notation by um, the curly braces. Okay, so as the empty set is a set, so it means that it can also be an element of other sets. So we have already mentioned that, um, we have already mentioned that um, a set can contain other sets, right? So since the empty set is a set, then it means that it can be an element of other sets. So this set having um, elements, empty set, and um, one, two, three, and X is an example of a valid set, okay? So we then have, um, we then have this difference that you must um, take note. So this empty set is different from a set containing an empty set. So we can visualize it like this. An empty set is a set of zero, elements. But in this case, a set containing an empty set is a set of one element or that one element being the empty na set. So as you can see, we have one global na set which contains an element which is an empty set. 
or you can um, replace this um, with this notation. Okay, so moving on. So sets can also be equal. So we term this um, as set na equality. So we say that the two sets are equal if they have the same elements. So suppose we have this set containing one, two, three, four, and five. So this is equal to um, a set containing five, four, three, two, and one. So remember that a property of a set is unordered or the order does not matter. So even if they have um, even if they have a different order, but since the element in this set is also in this set, so we can say that they are equal. And this set containing 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, 1 is equal to set containing 4, 3, 2, and 1. Because um, another property of a set is that um, it has distinct na elements. Or in other words, there are no duplicate na elements. Okay? So, two sets are not equal on the other hand if they do not have the same elements. So, suppose we have this set 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then we have another set 1, 2, 3, 4. So, we say that they are not equal because this element um, 5 is not found in another a set which contains only one, two, three, and four. All right, so then we say that they are not equal. So here are some more examples. Suppose we have a set one, two, three, four, and we can express it into a set uh, using an implicit na definition or um, set builder na notation, such as x such that x is an integer where x is equal to 0 and greater than 0, I mean, and x is less than 5. So if we list down the elements of this um, set given the property that is being stated here, this will be basically equivalent to a set containing elements 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? And this is also equal to this um, Another na set expressed using a set builder notation. So x is a positive na integer whose square is greater than 0 and less than 25. All right? So now, the elements of a set can also be elements of another 